Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode. My mother lied about having chemo whilst my girlfriend is currently undergoing chemotherapy. Really just want to rant passive parents make Thanksgiving miserable. Additional info, AITA for not telling my father and stepmother about my son's birth? Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. My mother lied about having chemo whilst my girlfriend is currently undergoing chemotherapy. I'm 24F. My mother has lied or exaggerated physical and mental illnesses in the past and I believe it to be some kind of welfare scheme. It seems like every month or so she has a new deadly disease and plays it out for sympathy, then it will miracle sly disappear and she will never mention it again until another disease takes its place. She has also done other things like taking a loan in my name and hiding my mail from me to cover it up, and she used to occasionally give me her own prescribed anxiety drugs to help me calm down when I was going through a depressive state as a teen. They were very strong and would send me to sleep quite quickly. There are other things too but we don't have all day. So all of this has created a distance in our relationship. However, I never called her out on her bullshit because she would play the victim and guilt trip me and try and turn the rest of my family against me. So it seemed easier just to play pretend and keep a distance. Well, this was the final straw. My GF was diagnosed with cancer and has been receiving treatment for around two months now. It's been shit tbh. Now out of the blue, my mother must have felt like the spotlight wasn't on her, and now has lupus. She told my older brother that she needs to have chemo tablets to cure it. Today I called her out on this and said that I felt very disrespected that she would lie about this considering what my GF is going through. She stated that what she said to my brothers was taken out of context and she meant that there's a similar drug, in a very low dose, in the medication she needs to take in what's in chemo. Even though her exact wording was, I need to go on chemo tablets, but yeah okay. She also said she felt hurt that we were gossiping about this amongst ourselves and that she never told me directly anyway, so why should I be hurt by it? She then proceeded to tell me that I have destroyed her and that she is in tears for even bringing this up. I replied, I don't care. I'm tired of this and stated that our relationship is now beyond mending. Officially done. P.S. My older brother seems to be on my side and has shown support. My younger brother seems to play into her bullshit a lot and would rather not get involved in the drama. He sees me calling her out as a hassle because now he has to deal with her crying and blowing up his phone. Not my problem though. My parents are divorced so I don't think my dad knows. My dad's a good guy though so I'm happy to still have him around. Call her bluff and tell her you're taking her to her next DRS appointment. You are allowed to go no contact with toxic relatives. From the first couple of sentences it really seems like she has Munchausen syndrome, but reading further it might just be entitlement and stupidity. Really just want to rant passive parents make Thanksgiving miserable. In my family, Thanksgiving has always been. My brother and I, along with mom and dad. My parents slash paternal grandparents. Aunt slash uncle slash cousin. Another aunt and uncle. Two very close family friends, pretty much family. My family has always been very close. About two months ago or so, my grandfather passed away after a long battle with dementia and kidney issues. Needless to say my family was heartbroken and was just trying to process all of it. My grandmother and my father are still trying to process it. So, fast forward to this Thanksgiving. Mostly the same crowd coming over to our place, except this time around we had my cousin, his wife, their two kids, and my cousin's parents come over. We always welcome extended family that we don't get to see a lot. However, disaster quickly struck. The kids were among the most undisciplined we have ever seen. Running all over the house, jumping on furniture, etc. Just being totally out of control. At one point, my father talks to the girl and tells her to stop climbing up on our porch railing because it could break and she could fall the 20 feet or so to the ground and hurt herself, 
My parents live on a mountain. The girl then proceeded to talk back with an attitude to my dad, basically refusing to stop and telling him that it won't break. So, you think the parents would be involved with disciplining their children? It was the total opposite. They were completely passive, just sitting there not even acknowledging their kids in any way. They let them do whatever with minimal consequences. Finally, they leave for two hours or so to get some stuff for their kids from the store, they would be spending the night with my cousin's parents. When they leave, his parents do a little bit of a better job, but still very hands-off. Basically put the kids in my dad's movie room alone and turned on the TV and left him down there for like 20 minutes at a time. Because of this, my older brother and his girlfriend took care of the kids begrudgingly and despised it. My dad was having to keep a constant eye on them to make sure they didn't break anything. They finally leave, and we were exhausted and just frustrated. My mom's parents, who watched these kids all the time, couldn't believe the behavior and lack of discipline from the parents. My dad was super upset. Today, my dad said I didn't even get a chance to process our first Thanksgiving without my dad. That really just made my heart hurt. Please discipline your kids. I'm not passive. If you're in my house and you can't properly watch your kids, I will discipline them. Don't like me stepping in? Then get out. I wouldn't let my kids do it. That's me all day if you do not want your kids to be disciplined in my house then get control of them because if you don't I absolutely will and if you don't like it you can get out. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. I completely agree that passive, aka negligent, parents are just the worst. What I don't understand is why on earth no one that's being affected by their horrid little crotch goblins ever says anything. I'd be mortified if my kids behave like that. If an adult came to me and told me my kids behaved like these kids did, I promise you that they'd be put in check. Why do people do literally nothing but try to contain these children and say nothing to their parents? I think my parents are inherently non-confrontational in nature. Especially since the parents are my mom's nephew and his wife. Additionally, these people come from a side of the family that is much more confrontational and rough. My mom is already in a huge argument with her sister-in-law who is totally manipulative, nasty, and rude. I think they were just trying to keep the peace. I'd be infuriated. While I don't believe kids should be seen and not heard, their presence isn't supposed to ruin anyone's experience. Those parents are not doing their kids any favors, no one is going to want them around. Hugs to your dad. Parents like that should get their kids taken away as they don't do their jobs as parents anyway. Part of being a parent is disciplining them when they do something wrong. And these parents are not doing anything to punish them. If I was there, I would have yelled at both cousin and his wife to start punishing their kids before I do it for them. And they won't like it if I have to punish them as I will also find a way to punish the lazy parents. Additional info, AITA for not telling my father and stepmother about my son's birth? My AITA post from a few weeks ago was voted not enough info, which seems fair. I tried to reply to whatever comments I could, but I don't think everyone reads those. So I'm writing this to reply to the most common questions that were asked in my original post, as well as to clarify some things that might have been misunderstood. Some of these are literally copy-pasted from my comments, by the way. Does Paula have slash want slash like kids? She doesn't have children, and from what I gather, she doesn't want to. I know for an absolute fact that my father doesn't want more kids. She has also never been pregnant, she has mentioned that to my sister on some occasions. Paula does, however, like kids. Especially babies. She was all over my cousin's daughter once she was born, and I have no doubt she'd do the same with my son. It's pregnancy, and the events that surround it, that she seems to have a problem with. The age gap between my father and Paula. Paula, is actually on the older side, none of the, many, women my father has been with since divorcing my mom have been older than 35 by the time they broke up. I'm genuinely surprised they're still dating, as his relationships don't tend to last more than a couple years. And yes, I do realize that none of these things are good. As much as I'm bothered by it, it's not my place to say anything. 
especially now that I don't live with my father anymore. As long as they're both consenting adults, there's not much I can do or say about it, and that's fine. Why does my sister find Paula annoying? According to my sister, Paula's most annoying habits include frequently speaking in a baby voice, mostly around my father, interrupting other people while they're talking and criticizing random women on the street, behind their backs. I don't know Paula well enough to be sure how valid these claims are, but I have witnessed a bit of those first two habits during previous visits. The baby voice annoys me too, to be honest. She sometimes sounds like the four-year-olds I used to babysit. But again, it's not my place to complain. Paula's behavior once my cousin's daughter was born. Paula would ask for more pictures of the baby than both me and my sister were getting, even though she barely knew my cousin. She made many comments about how she looked nothing like my cousin's husband. She tried to get my cousin's daughter to say her name when she was five months old, Paula isn't her real name. Her actual name is longer and harder to pronounce. And every single picture Paula ever took with the baby was turned into an Instagram post, most times without my cousin's approval. Whenever we visited, Paula asked to hold my cousin's daughter all the time and hesitated to give her to anyone else. Last Christmas, she wanted my cousin to open her gift for the baby first and got annoyed that an actual infant wasn't as excited about it as she was. She has also made a few comments about how my cousin still hasn't bounced back and has spoken ill of my cousin's husband behind his back. What updates did I make about my pregnancy? Some people in the comments seem to mistake updates for social media posts, so I want to stress that I barely posted about my pregnancy on social media. I made maybe two posts while pregnant and another one to announce my son's birth. Those were only on Instagram, I hate TikTok, and my account is private. Many of my co-workers didn't even know I was pregnant until I showed up one day with snug clothing and a seven-month bump. A few of them didn't find out until I went on maternity leave, I do a large part of my work sitting down. The updates I'm referring to were made only to my family and close friends. They were mostly about mine and my son's health. And all of them were made either in person or by text slash phone call. Most of the updates I made to my father were through text, since I work and don't see him in person that much. Also, my father and I have had problems in the past over me not telling him anything, and my relatively new habit of updating him on what has been going on in my life is an effort to remedy that. Seriously, I get where people were coming from, but I find it concerning that we live in a time where someone can't mention updates about their pregnancy without people assuming they're talking about social media. Did I talk to my father about his or Paula's behavior? Yes. Several times. He said he'd try to be more involved, but never made any attempt to do so. He either didn't remember our conversations or genuinely didn't care. I'm fine with Paula not being interested in my pregnancy or the two events I invited her and my father to. We don't know each other that well. What I'm not fine with is her rudeness whenever I shared any information with my family, as well as the fact that my dad let himself be dragged down by her behavior. How many events did I invite them to during my pregnancy? Literally, the only two I mentioned. The name reveal lunch and the baby shower. Why a name reveal? Me and my husband hate gender reveals, but we still wanted a small, light-hearted affair with close friends and family and calling it a party was an exaggeration on my part. It was a small lunch with a clue-style game my husband and I created. I talked to my sister about it, and we both think that had I not told my father the lunch was baby-related, he and Paula might have come. Off-topic, I'm pretty proud of that game, so here's a small description of what we did, feel free to skip this. We pretty much made a custom clue board game. Rather than guessing the suspect, weapon and murder location, the goal was to guess the name, there were six options, the first stuffed animal we'd gotten him, also six options, and a random room in our apartment, nine options, and we mostly kept that part just to make things harder for the players. We used a template of the clue board as a base and added mini versions of the rooms in our apartment. We got miniature animals to stand in for the weapons. And we also made the cards from scratch. 
I work with animation and my husband briefly studied graphic design. We had some help from my architect friend and two other friends who got design degrees. It was a little over the top, but we had a lot of fun doing it. It was basically a collective passion project. Not everyone cares about your pregnancy forward slash having a baby is a normal thing forward slash you're not the main character of everyone's life. At no point did I express any of that. Nor did I expect to be treated like Demeter. I am perfectly aware that pregnancy is not an unusual experience, and I'm not special just because I had a baby. Most of the time, I actually hate being the center of attention. I updated my family about my pregnancy because my son is their family too, and my friends because they asked and worried about me. I never expected any special treatment from any of them. But I do expect to be treated with respect, or at the very least politely. You shouldn't cut your dad and his girlfriend out of your son's life just because he didn't care about your pregnancy. Again, I never said I would. All I did was not tell them my son was born. I made it clear that they were free to come meet him once we brought him home. And this isn't about them not showing up to parties or not caring about my pregnancy as much as I did. My father missed my graduation, not coming to my baby shower doesn't bother me that much. It's the condescending attitude and lack of interest that both my dad and Paula have been displaying my entire pregnancy that made me decide not to tell them. Did my father know my due date? I told him about it several times. My son was born the day after my due date. At no point did he try to reach out before or during my hospital stay. My best guess is that he forgot about it. Who did come to visit us in the hospital? My mom, my stepdad, my sister, my maternal aunt and two cousins, mother-in-law, brother-in-law and a few of our closest friends. Overall, about 15 people came to meet our son during our four-day hospital stay. My mother, sister, brother-in-law and two of my best friends, including my baby's godmother, were the only people who came more than once. I also want to add that besides those people, the only ones who found out about my son's birth prior to my post on Instagram were the ones who asked. My father and Paula were not among those people. The thing that sticks out to me about this is the age thing between your father and his GF. Like you say if they are both consenting adults it's none of your business, but you also need to let it go instead of just not speaking your mind about it. They are adults. It's their relationship. It does say something about someone though if they consistently date people 20 or more years younger than they are. Yeah, it's their relationship, but I am oh it speaks to her dad's maturity and personality that someone 21 years younger is on the older side of women he's dated. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.